Hi, welcome to this week's edition of the Blue Soccer again. John, Dave, and myself. We're going to look back over Leinster's victory against Cardiff at the weekend, all the URC action, and of course, uh, preview the uh, Six Nations, which starts on Saturday in earnest with our game against Wales over in the Millennium Stadium. So, but first of all, boys, a uh, 38 14 victory against Cardiff. Uh, I can't figure out whether we were great or Cardiff were brutal. Well, all I can say is it's a, it, it's a good thing there's a bit of a break now between games because it gives the ground staff at the RDS a chance to wash the stench of Cardiff's shite off the pitch. They were absolute... Okay, look, that's not our problem. All we can do is beat the team that's in front of us. But the team that's in front of us, they, were, they showed a lack of interest. They showed a lack of attitude. They showed a lack of ability. And they showed a lack of courage. Totally, yeah. I was expecting a bit of a shellacking off those guys because, well, their pack wouldn't have been uh, any better than ours on paper, particularly. They had some heavy hitters in the back. They had a couple of Kiwi centres. They had, uh, I know Matthew Morgan didn't look up for it at all, but uh, they had they had a decent back line compared to ours. Ours was like, you know, met in the car park. Guy making his debut at 12... Uh, you know, another guy who came out of the back line making his debut, his debuts in the pack. There were, you know, it was a very, very callous yeah. team. And I just thought this is a uh, game 16 was was great to get 16 wins in a row, but it's not going to happen for 17. I thought it would be a miracle if we managed a win. You know, I was a, may have been alone in that, but uh, they didn't. They didn't have the ball. They didn't look like scoring. OK, they came back at the end when it was too late and scored a few tries. Um, but in in the first part of that game, did they have the ball? Did they have the ball in their twenty two? Not really. I, you know, I, I haven't watched it back, but my memory is they were just like Dave said. They were they didn't show up. They only had the ball long enough to kick it away badly. Yeah, I, I don't know what they were at or what was yeah. going on in their heads. Was it thirteen internationals they had? Something crazy. Like yeah, that. and you consider we. We had 20 guys away uh, with Ireland. Then we had injuries to the likes of Henshaw, Ed Byrne, Jenkins, Tommy O'Brien, Frawley, Charlie Natta. You know, like, you could probably, you could say that it was close to 30 fellas not available for selection. And we still put out a side that scored six. Okay, over 30. But we put out a side that scored six tries and put 38 points on Cardiff. You know, like... Like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, you kind of do, in some ways, you hate to hear the criticism of the league by particularly the English. But when you do see a result like that and you're at the game and you see the poor standard from those international players that were playing for Cardiff, you kind of say, yeah, fair enough. You know, like they didn't. They, it's like as though they didn't give a damn. Just well, why bother getting on the airplane? Because... I, I I disagree. I, I'm sorry. I agree with you completely, Jason. Um, I've always been a fan of the league, but the year before last, I thought it was oh, it was just dreadful. I mean, there was it was completely pointless. Um, and last last weekend's game was a throwback <clears throat> to that. Um, because the league this year has been very very good, but 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 Cardiff Cardiff last week they were they were shocking. Now credit has to go to Leinster. You got a lot of young guys coming in there. Stepping in, making if not first get if not making debuts, they, they were making run on day or starting debuts like from the start. Um, and they slotted in, they followed the system, they did what the, the coaches told them to do, and they executed well. Um, so you know, there, there cre some credit does have to go to Leinster, but a team like Cardiff with that number of players with the reputations that they supposedly have to perform the way that they did. If I was if I was die young, I'd be I'd be hanging handing out pink slips. Yeah. But like I, I, I listened to Gordon Darcy on the radio the other night and, and like he was he was putting the blame purely or squarely at the feet of Die Young. You know, but motivation motivation is his job, but at the same time. They have to buy into it. Um maybe they thought maybe they thought they were coming over to play a load of uh, callow kids and that they didn't have to do much and you know. As we said last week, um, the, these guys are training with, you know, World Player of the Years, et cetera, et cetera, uh, day in, day out. Uh, they're getting the same coaching as World Players of the Year. And also, they know that this is a chance. 
grab it with both hands, you might not get another one. So, you know, they were probably as well motivated as you can be, um, which sure yeah, it showed. And 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 in fairness, some of our guys but, did 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 take that chance. I thought Max Deegan, Max Deegan looked like an adult playing with children oh, yeah. at one point. I mean, he was just outstanding. Mm. I thought Luke McGrath. You know, if, if if you put out a team that's that's fairly inexperienced, even even the out half is fairly inexperienced. You want your you want your your go to guys, your guys like Luke McGrath, like Ross Maloney, like Max Deegan, to to show direction, and they showed direction. They led from the front. Those guys, Ruddock too, Ruddock, was, Ruddock too. Sorry, yeah, Ruddock, absolutely immense. Uh, he always seems to when he's he's yeah. like the old days with Bernard Jackman, Mal Kelly, and a load of kids in the Dragons. He he always seems to. Uh, to really play the role well when he has the young fellas uh, to, to mentor. <clears throat> He's the world's greatest child minder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I did, I did a little bit of research just before the start of this. Now, you know, it's a dangerous thing, but I just had a look at the four different Welsh clubs and their opposition against non-Welsh opposition if you know what I mean so teams from the other countries so they've played this season they've played 33 games against uh, non-Welch opposition they've won nine drawn one and lost 23 of those games well wow. you know like do you know what I mean and I know that there's like that's a huge that's a very very uh, large deficit of, of, of performance um you know, when they, they're only getting a result in 10 of those 33 games. But, like, I know that they have, like, it just seems that everything is wrong. It's wrong on the pitch. The clubs are dictating what's happening in the union. The union is run by a bunch of... Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Um, you know, like, everything is wrong. And yet... You know, they've. In the, I just had a look at this. So we'll talk about the Six Nations in a little while. They've they've topped the. They've won the championship two of the last five years. Do you know what I mean? They somehow or other can manage to, like, like a a, a dragon rising out of the embers of a fire. That's a phoenix, not a dragon. But point being that they can somehow or other resurrect their season from the pits of of despair. It's, Yep, yeah, they're kind of handed to them in fairness. I mean, okay, the, we, we, we'll come to the thing like, um, and everything we've said about the Welsh regions and all that, and yet not one of us would be surprised if Wales were to win on Saturday. Um, I mean, we think Ireland are a better team, we think Ireland will win, but Wales in the Six Nations, Wales, those players who look so poor playing for their regions, when they put on a Welsh jersey, and particularly Gatland, although Pivak had, had, his, had his moments as well, when Gatland gets at them, they they grow ten feet. Yeah, they really do. It's incredible. But you know, like on on the evidence of what we saw at the weekend, if that's if that's the standard of their of their sides, you know, like and, and those. The, the thing is, like, we, we, like I am a great, great admirer of that fella Botham. Like I just think, I mean, I I used to. I used to love his dad when he played cricket. His granddad, so much granddad. With his, granddad. His, his granddad, views, Jay. But, uh, his granddad, sorry, his granddad, of course. Yes, <laughs> yes, his granddad makes me feel terribly old. But his granddad, I used to love his granddad when he played cricket, not so much his political views now. But like I, I thought that Botham was a very motivated player. He was anonymous there at the weekend. Yeah. You know, you would you would have expected uh, somebody like him to uh, to step up, you know, in the same way as Ruddock did and, and uh, Max Deegan. For whatever yeah. reason, it wasn't happening. Yeah, there's a there's another guy. Like, like I think uh, Turnbull as well in the back row. Like he's a very experienced and very good player. You know, like I, where were these guys? Yeah. What the hell were they at? But I I do question whether or not there's any consequences for the results like that. You know, are they just like? Yeah, but like we lost to Leinster, so be it. You know, it's it is Leinster, of course. Yeah, I I I think they have. I think they've managed to compartmentalize lots of things. Um, they don't seem to care about how they do in the URC away from home. They don't seem to care in general how they do in Europe, or even if they get to Europe. Um, 
all they care about. And and, and it's an accusation that used to be labeled labeled at, at Scottish players from a club perspective more before they, they regionalized. That Scottish players, once they got selected for the Scottish team, they lost interest in anything else. And there might be a situation like that for those guys knew they weren't going to be playing for Wales, so why bother? Exactly. Yeah. But like we spoke, we spoke about I definitely spoke about him just before Christmas about Reese Ruddock and the admiration that I have for him for a guy that you know eight or nine seasons ago started against the All Blacks in Diviva in that game that we we were narrowly beaten in the last minute to still have the motivation to keep driving on to put in performances like he did at the weekend even though he knows that his you know four of or three of, of his of his counterparts are away with the Irish national sides that he's well down the peck in order that if there was a Heineken Cup final to be played tomorrow unlikely he'd make the 23 <coughs> but he still keeps going and he still keeps putting in and I just have the utmost admiration for him because he's got a he's got 200 Leinster caps he's probably got 20 or 30 Ireland caps doesn't have to prove anything to anyone but he's still putting it in well he, he, the thing is he proves it to himself and the reason why there might be a European Cup final that he wouldn't be involved with is because of the attitude of guys like Reese Ruddock every day of the week not just on match day it's the attitude they have every day of the week in training the way they prepare themselves the way they carry themselves when they're playing with a bunch of young fellas guys like James Culhane you know they look at how a Reese Ruddock manages himself and work works during the week and that's invaluable because they're going to see a lot more of Reese Ruddock than they're going to see of say Caelan Doris or 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 or, or Conan because he's the guy who's there so yeah. what he does is more important almost for the for next mm -hmm. season and the season after and the season yeah. after for the for the for Leinster being able to repeat these uh successes yeah. it, what he does is much more important it's than probably... almost than the international guys yeah, correct. And I'm sure that he learned it from the fellows that went before him and the likes of Doris now see it and said, Jesus, if I want to be the next Jamie Heaslip, I have to be to put in the standards that the guys ahead of me are putting in, you know, and it's just that it's that excellent or striving for excellence and uh, perfection that that, that team seems to, to have. Well, look, we can we can. I won't want to dwell too much longer on, on that game, but like we just quickly run through. Like obviously, it's our thirteenth straight victory in the league, and throw in four more in the in the Heineken Cup. You know, seventeen games on the trot is a pretty impressive record so far. But obviously, it won't be worth much unless we we get some silverware at the end of the season. But um, we just have a quick chat about some of the other results. Ulster did, Ulster did us a favour by beating the Stormers. Um, I was surprised that I know they picked, you know, they, like it's a ridiculous travel schedule, but I thought that the Stormers would have brought up a stronger side with them, um, particularly that they do have that break now during Six Nations. And But, but a 35, 35 to 5 victory over them was pretty good for Ulster and pretty good for, for us. It kind of uh, clipped clip their their charge and and it keeps the gap at 16 points yeah it's, it's a win Ulster needed and um, they needed to put some smiles back on their faces um and you know the guys the guy i mean it, it, whether it was good play from mcfarland or good play from andy farrell um the guys who were left out of the irish squad who might have thought they could have been there who previously had been there i should say and who were left out because i mean Ulster have been playing like drains for the last you know, a couple of months. They stood up. Lowry was really good. Hume was really good. Treadwell was really good. Um, I thought that uh, Dwayne Vermeulen was absolutely brilliant. Um, man of the match by a considerable distance. Um, although, so I don't know how, uh, how uh, uh, what's his face got it. Um, although he does look like a fella you'd like to have a few beers with. Um, <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, no, I thought it was it was a good win for us to put a few smiles back on faces. I mean, it's that they, they, they'll know the value of it. I mean, and they'll know that the value of it is is it isn't huge, but at the same time, getting a win, playing a bit of good rugby, enjoying a run around, it's it's it, it's going to help. 
Yeah, I, I've been, I was thinking actually about how the Stormers and the South African uh, sides in general would manage. Like there's two things. One, they've got the huge travel, which we all know about and which has been talked about at length. But also they've got basically an unending season because between, between um, well, not even just this season, but between Curry Cup, um, the Tri-Nations, whatever it's called, Rugby Championship, uh, our league, Europe now. Like it's just, it's, so what they, ha- what they are doing is resting players a lot during the Six Nations, which would, uh, previously have been there the beginning of their season February will be the start of Super Rugby and they used to be in it so so they're they're actually le- you know they are rotating an awful lot of players and leaving guys home from the really ha- hard travel I think it was the Sharks that left a lot of players at home for two weeks in a row uh, during Europe as well uh, so yeah they're going to manage their way through it but it, it, it must be an awful hack between the travel and the, and the unending season it might it might be a warning. It might be a warning for European teams come the the round of sixteen, that that they this appears to be what they're waiting for. They're the resting players now in preparation for that. Hmm. Perhaps and and also for the playoffs <clears throat> in the URC. Yeah. So they're probably going to peak for that. Is the is the plan? Still, you'd imagine they'd make. When we're not out. Well, they're at home, you see, for every, they've only won away game now, all the South African. Uh, the, star, the week the Stormers come to us, all the other South Africans are away too. But the rest of their five, six games, or seven, I think, in case of the Sharks, are all at home. You know, there's a lot of uh, South African games, or there's a few South African games during the tournament. Uh, Ulster have to get in there. Glasgow have to get in there to play re-fixtures. Uh, but they, they they only have to come north again on one weekend until the playoffs. Well, that's right. Those games from Scuttergate are refixed, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. The twenty fifth <laughs> they're being played on of uh, February. So yeah, we'll see how it works out. Uh, it's gonna be. It's gonna take a few seasons to shake out. I mean, I know the Stormers are champions and all that. But they didn't have Europe last year. They didn't have a World Cup. They didn't have lots of other things. You know, uh, so. It's going to take a while to settle and between the travel, I mean, you've already heard uh, the likes of uh, Exeter whinging about having to go down there during the, uh, and some of the French teams as well during the Heineken Cup. So imagine what English it's like. English and French whinging? Nay, <laughs> say it ain't true, John. <laughs> imagine what it's like <laughs> for them having to travel and some of the horror stories about the sponsored travel that they've had to go via uh, Doha mm. or wherever the hell they're going. Um you know yeah. that's that's gonna add up. And the only thing is that the only thing is that they are used to that, John. I know they're used like to... they've had twenty years of of. Worst well, they used to fly to Japan. They used to fly to Argentina. No, right. They used to fly to New Zealand, Australia. I know you that, know? but like, well, not... they're still flying for the rugby championship, and not only that, but uh, the the Super Rugby was a sprint. Super Rugby was like February to June or whatever it was. Uh, February mm. to July, maybe it it wasn't a protracted competition where you were uh, uh, like our our season but was kind of I'm a just week sur- behind in cup, a few weeks of league, a few weeks on well, cup international. Yeah, I get know. that, but I don't understand why they don't try and have little mini tours rather than coming up for two weeks and going home. Why aren't they here for a month? You know, would save would Money. save two legs of their trip. Yeah, but they still have to spend the same amount of money. They still they're still going to be here for two weeks. You know what I mean? What they save on the flights, what they what they spent, what they save on the hotels, they spend on the flights. So yeah, I I, I agree with Jay. Maybe. Look, it's 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 it's, it's still bedding in period uh, for the South African team. So there's a certain amount of you know kinks to be shaken out. But um, at the end of the day, uh, it was also that kind of shook out more of them um, because Stormers probably mm. felt you know not entirely. Un- uh, lacking in confidence going to play that Ulster team. That Ulster team was, you know, rocking badly confidence-wise. So if they'd gotten a win, even with a restricted team, it would have been... It wasn't unlikely that they would win that match. As it turns out, Ulster were far too good. They seem to have got some stuff together. Um, but it'll be very different when they have to play a, a team, a full-strength team that's not had to travel for, as you say, 36 hours. 
Yeah. Four yeah. years is the last. Time. It could have been Kurt. It could have been curtains for Ulster if they had a loss that game. Certainly their URC season would have been in trouble under severe pressure. I'm sure they I'm sure they still would have qualified, of course, but their confidence levels would have been pretty, pretty low. Um Munster's magnificent form and, and uh their their <clears throat> win to loss ratio is certainly improving. They've now equaled Benetton's. They're at Seven wins and thirty out of thirteen games. Uh, they had a good victory. Although I didn't think it was going to be a victory after the opening cracking game of rugby. Yeah. It, was a, it was a great game of rugby, and there's there's two ways to look at that. One is the charitable way, and one is the churlish way. And the, and the charitable way to look at that would be that Munster scored six tries, got a win away from home, missing all of their most important players with with their internationals gone. So great result for Munster. The other way of looking at it is Munster conceded 30 points against Benetton who were missing 20, 22 players. Not so good. Mm. Mm. Um, and their, their, their defence looked porous. I mean, uh, Fekitoa who looked, re- Fekitoa and Frisch who had looked really good together last week against Toulouse. Um, they had more holes in the colander against uh, Treviso and Treviso seemed to oh, be able to look, find those well, holes. Bundy, don't worry Dave, 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 you're getting you're getting ahead of yourself there. Bundy will take his place, don't worry about that. <laughs> well, uh, they've actually signed, re-signed uh, Rory Scannell this, today. Interesting. They signed, they actually, uh, uh, you, might, you might have heard, they've signed both Scannells and John Ryan. Oh, John Ryan's supposed to be after Super and, Rugby. And when Super Rugby's over, he'll be back as a Munster player. Oh, right, okay. Okay, cool. That's good. Yeah. For them, good for Ireland. Yes. Go on, the yeah. parish, eh? Well done, uh, John Ryan and Munster. I didn't hear that. You're right. Well, the way uh, he's playing at the moment, I wouldn't be surprised if he did get an international call-up because he's he's certainly been a no bit of a Finley, rock for the lad last few games. Of... <laughs> you leave Finley out of this now, John. <laughs> I mean, no, he's been brilliant for Munster. I mean, he's been a key p- part of the reason why they... Have gone from being a bit ragball rovers to actually looking, you know, coherent and competent and all that kind of thing. Um, he's been a key part of that because, you know, you need ball and he's winning them good ball. Um, why they let him go in the first place is just it's it's mm. it's indicative of where the club was at the time. Luckily, there seems to have some good sense seemed to have uh, seems to have arrived in with uh, Roundtree taking over. Yeah, but it's amazing that they can find money from down the back of the sofa or in an old in, a, in an old shoebox under the stairs. But for a center. they can find money. They can find money for international centers, but they can't get one for a homegrown Irish prop, where which which there's their weakness. Yeah, but I mean, I went through a list there. But do you remember that John about a year, year and a half ago of the number of centers Munsters have signed over the last? Yeah. Since they won the Heineken Cup, actually, since 2008. And it's a ridiculous number. They sign more than one a year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just and crazy they, stuff. They signed fairly pretty household names. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah. weren't si- signing donkeys. They were signing... Well, they also signed some donkeys. Players. I mean, going back... All... Well, but I still think that, it, like, by they, if you go on the player's reputation... They had some very big household oh, yeah. names there. They had some. They, they had some very good players. I mean, obviously, you're talking about, um, you know, your Jean de Villiers, uh, your Sam Tu Tu. I'm talking Coles, about I, um, Casey Laulalas. The they were they were the players with a good was, reputation. But on the other hand, they also signed an awful lot of Jack yeah. Tautes and and uh, Francis Saelis. Yeah, but the dude and, that's there currently is is uh, was in the World Cup squad. You know. Mm. So, like the these these guys aren't chumps. If you're making the All Blacks uh, World Cup winning squad, oh no, you no, know, you're, you're well, they, they sign player. big names, but some, but sometimes they make some strange signings as well. I'm not just ta- I'm not talking about the key. The, I'm not mm. talking about the the main guy. I'm talking about the second guy they usually sign because they sign more than one a year. Yeah, um, they can be well, a that's bit, it. you know. Mm. Yeah. Well, oh, Jack, uh, uh, now, Lynch, I thought Jack Lynch, Lynch, was a good player. He was a really good pro for them. Yeah. 
Yeah. I took his name in vain so there. Let's... <laughs> so Len Leinster, like, sorry, I mean, Connacht um, had a, a good win against the Lions, 43-24. Uh, um, they're, they're pulling their season back a little bit. It was, looked like it might be derailed, but they've got six wins under their belts. Um, yeah, so I, like we kind of were, we mentioned a little bit in jest earlier, but Bundy, I know he's away with the Irish squad, but uh, very strange um, what's going on there. Like he's their star player, their tallies man. You know, he's a big, a very, very big fish in a, in a small pool over there i'm surprised that like he's so and it's his falling out has been so public with them the the ironic thing is that they he or both parties which party whoever party chose the right time for bundy to fall out because it's the one area where mm. connick have a load of strength and depth they have a lot of really good centers they've tom farrell they've hawkshaw they've tom daly they've that guy carl ford who's come in looks excellent and obviously they got Bundy. Yeah. yeah. I did, so I, I did well, like, anyway, I did like the idea. The... Sorry, Jay. I did like the idea that uh, that 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 Connacht will be running out with an all Dublin fifteen centre partnership and with Farrell and Hawkshaw. <laughs> yeah, two cool mine lads. Just saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, so the Six Nations starts at the weekend. Um, we take on Wales. I think so. We take on Wales, and of course they have uh, Gatlin back at the helm. Uh, when when Pivac uh, was given the boot after their probably their I suppose the, the nail in his coffin was the loss against Georgia in the Autumn Internationals, but that was compounded by their last minute victory, obviously in the Six Nations. I'm not sure. So. Gatlin comes back in, but the whole place just seems in disarray. Like from racist to sexist comments from the their... whole place, apart from the international team, seems in disarray. The international team seems to be ticking along nicely now that Gatlin is back. He's got Alex King in as a as a well, back we haven't coach, seen he's a highly sought after coach. <coughs> mm -hmm. But the rest of the rugby yep. rugby does look like a shambles. It does, but he doesn't have. The dream team there. He doesn't have Rob Howley. He doesn't have Sean Edwards or Robin McBride. Or I'm sure there's a few that I, I, I'm, I'm missing out. But he 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 couldn't get those lads back. Um, and as we saw the team that was announced today, I think the average age is 32 and a half years. I was surprised it was 32. I thought it would have been 42. Oh, Some of them you are, think um... you are kidding, Mister? <laughs> if you think we're wrong, well, there's there's two, there's two ways to look at it. Like, I mean, yeah, I agree with you, Jay. I mean, and was it John? What were you saying that there was nine of the guys played in the 2012 Six Nations? Uh, I'm not sure it was me saying it, but yeah, I did read yeah. that. All right. But at, on the other hand, those nine guys have more have more Grand Slams than Ireland. Of course. Yeah. You know, that's sure. okay. You can't you can't just play on experience, but having it helps. Oh yeah. Oh, we could be uh sitting here next week going, Holy shit. <laughs> that's the end of that grand. Yeah. But you see, that's the thing, that's the thing about a like people because of his because of his the various side hustles he likes to engage in, people forget that Warren Gatland is probably the best coach in the northern hemisphere for the last 20 years. He has won everything with seemingly everything against him um you know he we look at the current state of the wru it that didn't happen today nor yesterday and yet he was still winning grand slams out of that pool yeah absolutely and he seemed to do it every year i mean he, he, he okay he didn't win grand slams every year but he seemed to be able to motivate that side and unfortunately he had to put a lot of fitness work into them which you know, they, they always say he beasted them when he got hold of them and sent them in all mad training camps to get them fit because they weren't getting fit for their regions. But he really, uh, he's a great, um, he's very good at the mental side of the game, uh, of preparing a team. And whether he does it by doing something crazy to take the, the, the pressure off his team, or whether he does it by something internal where he, he, he motivates his players by 
whatever method. Uh, he he seems to come up trumps more often than not, uh, especially when you see the players available to him in Wales, you know. And you're always saying, you know, they're playing against Leinster or Munster or whoever, and they're getting hockey, then stick them together for Wales. And it's the same number of teams that we're making a, a national team out of as uh, as Wales, but they seem to have the, uh, or historically anyway, let's say in the last 20 years, they seem to, uh, you know, have a better record than we did uh, under Gatland, than we did under even, you know, most of our coaches. Well, here's, here's one for you. Here's one for you, right? So since, say, the Rugby World Cup in 2011, so... 11 12 seasons we have played each other 10 times in the six nations and a record currently stands as one draw four victories for ireland and five victories for wales so do you know what i mean fairly evenly matched there's a few matches in there that were warm up friendly matches which i didn't bother counting and there was a couple of the autumn cup during covid again which i didn't bother counting because well, go back. Thought they were a bit, uh... Go back to uh, Gatlin taking over in two thousand and six. Uh, to Gatlin leaving, mm -hmm. and see what the record is. Yeah. And see how many Grand Slams they have. You know. Okay, we. I know, two. but you're I'm talking about like, but but you're for sure. But you're talking about coaching. You know, you don't forget he would have been coaching against Eddie O'Sullivan, so I wouldn't necessarily rank him as one of the great coaches. And the other coach was Declan Kidney, who had one extremely successful or one extremely successful year, uh, two thousand and nine, where I think we went unbeaten for the entire year. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, I mean, he was also the coach that was coaching Ireland when we were beaten by Italy, or when we conceded sixty points against New Zealand. So, do you know what I mean? Like Kidney and O'Sullivan were the coaches for that period up to twenty eleven. Mm -hmm. Real sort of the grown-ups kind of took over then in twenty, you know, 20, after yeah. the, after that, after that Ruby World Cup in 2013, when Schmidt came in and and now Farrell. So, you know, um, I I always used to say like why when this is going back ten years ago, look at compare our results at club level because Leinster were excellently coached and have been excellently coached since Checker took over. With the exception of a couple of years when um, don't mention it. don't mention the war. Connor was there. No, but the other point being that Ireland's results weren't particularly spectacular because I never really thought we were very well coached when Kidney was there, and like particularly going back to that World Cup game in 2011 when yeah, but, but the for thing some is, reason, Jay we beat us we beat Australia we beat Australia with an out half. And then, for some reason, he changed the out half for the quarter final against against Wales. So now I I agree with you. In, if you take the Ireland Wales in a bubble, but they weren't the like those aren't the only coaches Gatland was coaching against and winning against. Um, he was yeah. winning against English coaches, Scottish coaches, French coaches, Italian coaches. You know, he was winning Grand Slam. I mean, how, how many Grand Slams does Gatland have? Is it four, five, four? Four, four, I think. Four. I mean, is that that's nearly well? It's 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 twice what Ireland has in the last in the last thirty years anyway, it's since the game went pro. Yeah, you know that's that's yep. not to be True. that's not. And the point is, I mean, seventy yeah, years. What, now. What, 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 what you absolutely say is right, Jason. That there were issues in certainly with Ireland anyway in terms of coaching. Uh, Eddie O'Sullivan was able to get us so far, but no further. I still think he he's unfairly maligned to a certain extent. Um, Declan Kidney got us so far and maybe a little bit further than Eddie O'Sullivan did, but again, no further and certainly didn't, didn't progress the, the, the team. Um, Joe Schmidt won a grand slam and a couple of championships and he, he seemed to take it to another level. But then again, you know, the world cup, um, if you think it matters, then he didn't do too well there. Um, but Gatland yeah. world cups. Yeah. Grand slams. Semi-finals. Yeah. Lions tours. Yeah. Heineken Cups, yeah. Yeah. You he name it, he's won it. Oh, sorry. But but sorry, that was my point. The whole point of the, my, my argument was that Wales were excellently coached. And that yeah, was the yeah, difference. Sorry, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Leinster yeah. were excellently coached compared to the dross that our 
involved with the with and that have been since the year dot with the regions. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like Wales is Ireland in reverse. Yeah. No, not in reverse, but in, in, yeah. in the opposite. So, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um there's a few uh like obviously the Irish team, I don't think it's gonna be announced until tomorrow, was it? Normally Wednesday, I think. Um or even Thursday. But is it Thursday? Yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure. But uh, there's a few, obviously, a few um, interesting debates on what on what players will be picked. Like I think uh, number twelve is is uh, you know there's a bit of debate there. There's whether it's Bundy. Will he will he give him will he give him back the jersey? McCluskey had it for the autumn internationals. New kid on the block, Osborne is uh, there and thereabouts. To whether he gets gets the nod. Like, yeah, I, I know there's rumours saying that Osborne's going to start at 12, but I just can't see it myself. Uh, McCluskey may be a safe pair of hands. Uh, Aki, if you're going on classes, permanent form is temporary. I'd be going with Aki. Uh, but Osborne, Osborne's playing great. And like, it wouldn't be, your your chin, your chin wouldn't hit your chest necessarily, but yeah, and it's it's, it's not as if he's going to be playing against a sixty cap veteran uh, opposite him. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's not. Uh, mm-hmm. Wales have, I think Wales have got a what's his name Hawkins playing there, mm-hmm. um, and he's he's he's, mm-hmm. he's quite a, an inexperienced player as well. Um, personally, my favorite would be Bundyak. I mean, look, you look at everything Ireland's done in the last ten years, and Bundyak was in the middle of it. Yeah, well, like you know, he's he played every match in the Grand Slam year. He played in all our sig, all with the exception of the game in in in, in Soldier Field because he wasn't qualified then. He played in all our signal victories against New Zealand. Um, played in the tour down the, the tour down under. I mean, he's the guy. I mean, there's an argument to be made that Bundy Aki is Ireland's first choice centre, and mm-hmm. it's Bundy plus one. He seems to be out of favour in Connacht. Or I'm not sure what his injury story is or what's what's going on over there. But he's uh, he yeah he doesn't seem to be getting game time. And speaking of game time, you'd imagine that Andy Farrell would have wanted some of the guys playing. Yeah, but you don't you don't know what we don't know what the situation is because nobody's saying nothing. No, but like no, get away but from like. Him. You know, if time I, I, I don't think it matters anyway. It doesn't matter anyway. I mean, he he's played much more recently than say Johnny Sexton or James Lowe has. True. Well, there's. I mean, so one. is anyone questioning Johnny Sexton or James Lowe starting? No. So it's it's it, it, it's kind of a bullshit argument. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens when the team. I don't. Is- I, I don't know if he'd be picked or not, but I I think the argument that he's that he hasn't got game time. Doesn't stand up. Doesn't hold water at all. No, 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 I'm not saying that's an argument. I'm saying that you imagine that Andy Farrell would have wanted oh, his yeah, players yeah. getting game time, and that's why I mentioned Tyke Verlong. I don't know whether he was fit enough to play for against Cardiff. James Lowe was allegedly back in the country. You'd imagine that he wanted James. Lowe. He is, yeah. No, I saw a picture yeah. of him with with his, all his gear. So there you go. I mean, if I was Andy Farrell and the Six Nations was starting next week. I know it's a risk he could get injured and all that, but I if, if, if any of them needed game time, they would have played last weekend. Hmm. Well, we'll see. We'll see how that works out for us. Well, like, but per- personally, I'd go Bundy first, Jamie Osborne second, Gary Ringrose third, Jimmy O'Brien fourth, <laughs> James Ryan fifth, uh, Peter Stringer sixth, um, a couple of members of the Little Rascals seventh, and then Stuart McCloskey. <laughs> has, has nobody watched Ulster this year? Has, has nobody watched Ulster this year? That's that's high up, Dave. <laughs> Higher than you'd have him, Jay. <clears throat> well, I know. I thought he was okay. I thought he actually played very well against South yeah. Africa. Um, no, you're right. I I I am being facetious, but, but I just don't think he's an inter- he's, he's military. I know, I know, I know, I know. He's a yeah. good, solid like, URC pro. Wouldn't even give him hiding. Club, I though. think he's. <laughs> no, because he. I mean, if he was Ulster, uh, Ulster aren't that good, and he's in- well, he's integral good. to it. Not why they're not good, but he's just he's a he's he's a standard Ulster player. Okay, well we'll see. Uh, maybe Andy Farrell well, won't. You, you know, you know. Yeah, I, I, I look. You if, know what I'd if, love to see. I'm no genius. I, I'd love to see like. 
we've seen we've seen at the at the uh, particularly this season. I know I know we've all got different views on on whether what the IRFU or what the Irish coaches think of the, the Rugby World Cup, but currently this this coach one is clearly wants to develop a wider group of players with that in mind he ensured that there was those two matches down in in New Zealand for the A team or for the against the uh, Maori then he had the, uh, the the development tour down to South Africa during the season and he also had the game against New Zealand A in the OES the night before the South Africa game so he's clearly hell bent on developing a, a a broader, deeper squad, and I'd love to see him put that into into you know into action and say, I'm going to give Osborne a start and I'm going to pick Ross Byrne for this game, or uh, um, Crawley. I don't mind which, really, to be honest with you. We know what Sexton yeah. can deliver. I don't think I don't it'll know. ever happen, but yeah. I would love to see them. I'd love to see them given two guys that are going to be the future, an opportunity in a game like this and say, well, look, we have to plan. We have to plan for next season, regardless of whether it's next season, this time next year, because Sexton's not going to be there after the World Cup. We can plan for next season during the World Cup. Hmm. <laughs> you don't, you don't. Against Tonga. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't fuck around with the thing that pays for everything. Six, Irish rugby runs off Six Nations petrol. You don't, you don't, you don't pour salt yeah, into it. I, I get that. But like those, for example, I mean, I really like. I'm, I'm struggling to understand though that if a guy is been paid by the union, is within the squad. If you really want to say that you're a, a tier one, top notch level international team, you can't just be relying on the same 15 players week in, week out. You have to build, you have, unless that's all you have. But if you, if you want to develop a wider squad, you have to give them opportunities to but perform I, 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 at I that think level. That- I think that's what he has that's done. That's what makes Leinster so good, Dave. But I think that's what, what he has done, though. Da- so I, don't, I think that's what he has done. If you look at, if you look at, say, Joe Schmidt's last game in charge, you look at the team that that started that day. Did Hugo Keenan play? Mm-hmm. Mac Hansen, James Lowe. No. Um, no. Yeah. Was was you know there's guys like Andrew Porter has come into the system but, since, but, or he's but, moved around a bit. Yeah. Yeah. The but hookers, the point is, though, Dave. But the Dan point is, Brett, Dave, there's no you know, there's no rotation there. Like I know that, but there's no rotation there. So you'll say you've mentioned all those lads, but all those lads have played pretty much, unless they've been injured, have played when when they've been available for selection. They've played, for example, Hugh Keenan. The you know Rob Carney was calling it today at the end of that World Cup at international level, and you know they needed a replacement, so they picked Hugh Keenan. Hugh Keenan, let's say let's say we've played twenty or whatever it is, 20 or 30 games since then, Hugo Keenan's featured in 95% of them. Likewise, James Lowe, unless he's been injured. You know what I mean? Like, my, my point, I suppose, what I'm trying to say is, like, we should, we should be trying to get as many players playing at that level as possible. I, I understand that it's the Six Nations, you know, the, the, the Holy of Holies, but like, when else are you going to do it? Because we don't do it in the Autumn Internationals. Italy except game. the Fiji game. Yeah. And the World Cup. In the Italy game. We, we, yeah, see, we do. We, 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 yeah. No, I, I understand the point you're making, but I, I also think the point you're making seems to be a bit, you know, r- rotation for rotation's sake. And with, especially the way the fixtures line no, up this year, this is, this, is, this is, no, this is no, a no. grand slam year. No. My point is, my point is that if you look at the Irish, if, sorry, if you look at Leinster, the reason why Leinster win so many games is because of the strength of depth in their squad that you can take off Kelleher or bring on Kelleher because you've got an excellent set of of hookers as we did in the in 2011 and 2012 you can rotate your props. Don't necessarily think we've got the strongest depth of, of as we did. Don't think we've got necessarily the strongest <laughs> set of props as we did in, in, in back uh, in, in 11 and 12. 
but you have fellas that you can bring in. You can bring in Ryan Bird. You can bring in Jack Conan's off the bench. You can bring Luke McGrath off the bench. So you've you've very very good replacements for the guys that are coming on. But we don't know how good Ross Byrne is. Like Ross Byrne played in the Heineken Cup final. I I thought he fluffed his lines and it, had an opportunity. Didn't just like you know. How do we know that he won't do it again? We have to give him the opportunity. You have to give. Jamie Osborne an opportunity because I don't I, I'd hate to see Jamie Osborne come on in in the game against Scotland in the World Cup and blow it because he's no experience freezes on the day. I'd rather you do it in the World Cup than in getting than in the Six Nations. To be another Six Nations next year. Exactly. Anyway, but to be another Six Nations next year, there's another five of those games. I just I, I I just don't think I just don't I, I think a that we do we do rotate a bit more than you say than than, than you say okay we might rotate, rotate selection but all those guys will get runs off the bench um and if like you you were talking about a situation an extreme situation where we had we say that front row in, in, in 2011 we had a we had six tier one international players that there was little or no difference in quality between them. And they were proven players. We're not talking about that situation now with Ireland. There is a big difference between Ringrose and Henshaw or or Bundyaki and Henshaw and Stuart McCloskey and James Hume or whoever. You know, it's not like the, it's not like they're it's not like they're there but for the grace of God. There's a big difference in standard. And we know it from watching yeah. them. There is a big sure. difference in standard between Johnny Sexton and Ross Byrne. It's not like you're interchanging um you know, uh, I'm trying to think of 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 of, of, of positions where that happens in the back. It's not like you, it's not like you're switching Felipe and Johnny Sexton. You know, uh, when you're talking about guys who are different players at different times. Now, Ross Byrne, do we know that Ross Byrne can run a Six Nations game? I don't know. We, you're right. We've never had a chance to see it, but I think we might get to see it against Italy or Jack Crowley. Well, we didn't know whoever. Johnny Sexton. But say, say, we didn't know Johnny Sexton could do it when he came on against Munster in Croke Park. No, 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 we didn't. I mean, if you think about it, he had played against cast. That's it. So I don't want to bring up, you know, old. Oh, yeah. And, and he was hooked at half time and wasn't seen again for a, a long time. A hundred years ago. Yeah. 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 You know, he went back and played for Mary's. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, we don't but know. He, even Leinster didn't do that with guys that there was a big difference with. They only did it when the guys were, were you know, like in the back row when we had, when we had McLaughlin, Heaslip, Jennings and O'Brien. Four guys that you could kind of throw a blanket yeah. over in terms of quality, right? So you pick three one yeah. week and shuffle one around, and then pick the other three and shuffle one around. That's fair enough. You could do that, and Ireland could probably do that in the back row because we do have a, a lot of really good back rows. But I'm not sure you could do yeah. it in the centres. Not sure you could do it in, in anywhere in the backs. I'm not sure you could do it in any other position except back row. Maybe a little bit in second row. We have a, we, mm. we seem to have some good second rows there, but I'm not sure that there's anywhere else where there's that um, where the players are that close in terms of quality. Yeah, well, here's one. Her little rumor whether uh, Coombs might be getting the nod on the bench. Um, so presumably he's going to be there in place of uh, Jack Conan. So Jack Conan starts in a lines test. Or Caelan Doris. And well, I think <laughs> Caelan Doris is going well, possibly, yes, of course, yes. But yeah. I think the back row is going to be Van der Fleer, O'Mahony, and or and Ryan Baird or Peter O'Mahony. Or Peter Who O'Mahony. Who knows? This see, is, and, yeah. and, that, and that shows how much quality there is in the back row. And, and, and in your in the case you were discussing, Jason, absolutely. Play around with that back row. I mean, it doesn't matter which three we pick. They're going to be better than most. Mm. Um, I still like to play with a, a dedicated open side, but that's just the way I like to see rugby played. But, you know, the other guys can swap in and out because they're so good. Um, and I, I'd have no problems with Coombs. I'd have no problems with... Because I think he's actually... This year, his game has really, really expanded. I know I made a joke about uh, him being like um, pick and molds. Pick and molds isn't a bad guy to be like, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because but like, I mean, I think uh, he, 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 I saw him play against um, New Zealand in in that warm in that A game in November. But like, you know, from the reading the reports in the in the press. He got a bollocking and was told to go home because he's not fit enough. And 
if he wants to if he wants to sort of play for Ireland, he's got to improve his fitness levels and his ball. Uh, his ball carrying is pretty good, but his uh, his fitness level and his work his work rate has got to improve. And clearly, he has because we've seen the results of it for yeah. Munster. You know, absolutely, hundred percent. And um, actually. Guys like that, are, in a way, can be quite admirable because he probably thought he'd made it and he'd realised he hadn't. Yeah. So instead of sulking or kind of taking his ball home, he went home and worked his arse off to get back. I remember I remember Dave yeah. Kilcoyne a couple of years ago got the same thing from Joe Schmidt. Joe Schmidt showed him exactly... He asked Joe Schmidt why he wasn't in the team and Joe Schmidt told him exactly why. So he went away and worked on it and he was mm. back in the team. Yeah. But like, I suppose for every kind of stick, you have to give a carrot. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So he's given that, he's he's given that to Carberry and said, you know, your performances haven't been good enough over the last number of weeks or months with Munster. Go back and work on it. Said the same things to Coombs. Coombs has worked on it and has been brought back into the into the team. So you know, like it's it's it is pretty good. Like you've got to you've got to reward well, effort and and yeah. and. Um, Good man management, exactly. But that's one thing that you do kind of. You, anything I've read about Farrell, you say, Jesus, he is some. He's a really good man manager. Even a little anecdote that uh, Keith Earls wrote in his book about the, you know, he's is it he's dyslexic and didn't. They were kind of doing a spelling competition or something, and he he stepped in immediately and says, Earls, he doesn't do spelling tests. You know, <laughs> and I just took the. The pressure off him and yeah. like I just well, thought he, that was it was pretty good. He cool. also seems to be a very good child manager. Um uh, uh, <laughs> Owen Farrell complained. Did you hear about this, John? No. Owen Farrell was complaining about his kid running around the house wearing an Ireland jersey. Uh-huh. Wants to know why he was wearing the Ireland jersey. And the kid says, Because it's the jersey that granddad wears. <laughs> so so Owen Farrell told the kid, Well, granddad also wears a suit. I'm gonna make you wear a suit. <laughs> Apparently, he uh, starts buying a Man City on Farrell to support United because he's buying a Man City. (laughs) Man City. (laughs) Well, so it's good to see a bit of banter anyway. I mean, obviously, with a name like Farrell, they're Irish, but they actually are Irish, very close. They're not that far away. Andy Farrell's. Either parents or grandparents are, are Irish, so, you know. And his wife's family as well. And his wife's family as well. So, well, poor Alone Farrell's got it on all sides. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if um, if the young player becomes a really good player, the young boy that's, uh, I don't yeah. know, old he is, 12 or whatever. I wonder if, uh, who'd he declare for? He's lived in <laughs> Ireland a good bit. <laughs> he has spent a lot of time in Ireland. You see, you see him going to matches with his with his grandfather a lot. Nice one. Bring him on. He's, He's as good as his yeah, father. He was in uh, Willow Park, I think. No, not not Owen Farrell's son now. Uh, Andy's uh, Andy Farrell's son. Andy yeah. Farrell's youngest son. Yeah. Oh, I know the kid you mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the funny thing is, there's a lot of people out there who will have who, if they've seen Andy Farrell play, they'll only have seen him play rugby union at the end of his career when he was at Saracens. And they yeah. won't have seen Andy Farrell, the best rugby player in the world at the time, without question. Even if he had the wrong jersey on. The wrong Even if he, he was just, it didn't matter. He was just the best rugby player. He was, there's times when a rugby player is, do you remember John Eels was in his absolute peak? And he was just the best rugby mm. player in the world. It didn't matter if it was league. It didn't matter if it was union. He was the best. Andy Farrell, when he was at his peak, he was the best. Fair enough. He was good, all right. And mad that he played in that match, that famous match in Croke Park. And four years later, his son played for England against Ireland in the first game in, in the Aviva that Ireland well, played England. There you go. Um, he also played, if memory yeah. serves correctly, he also played in the first cross code match between Wigan and Bath in Twickenham. Oh, and I remember that match. Central yeah. Park. Do you remember those games? And he played in I those do, as yeah. well. I remember, so. yeah. uh, and uh, also, uh, the, both Farrell's father and son played together for Saracens 
I'm not sure if it mm-hmm. was a if it was I a mean, premiership match or what, but they did play a game. They did, yeah. A game. In fairness, together. if you if you cut the modern history of if you if you imagine the modern history of, of rugby being like a stick of rock and you cut it open, the Farrell name goes right through it. Faux show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, indeed. Well, anyway, boys, as ever, thanks a million. Thanks very much for watching. If you are following us on Facebook or Twitter, please give us a like, a subscription, and a thumbs up. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>